it, that we have the peace of God that passes all understanding. We thank you, Lord, for those tuning in and joining us virtually, Father, that we pray, Lord, that you would touch them even where they are, Lord, that they would have an encounter with you even in, in wherever they are, Father, that they would know and experience your presence, Father, in the name of Jesus. We're so delighted, Father. We just give you the praise, the glory, and the honor, Lord, for your faithfulness, Lord. And we believe as we have prayed and declared these things that they are done and it is so in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Come on, let's just give God some praise and glory. Amen. Come on, let's just bless his name. Let's honor him and glorify him tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm, I'm, I, have, I am so excited and so delighted to, 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 to serve in the capacity that God has called me to serve. And I'm excited for what God has on his heart, what he has on his mind uh, for each of us. Uh, corporately, individually. Uh, I am excited to be walking with God. Amen. And I trust that you are as well and that you have great expectations to hear from heaven tonight. Hallelujah. We're going to be continuing uh, in the same topic as last Wednesday. Praise God. Uh, we're going to be talking about the law of seed time and harvest. Uh, last week, I did not give a subtopic, but I suppose if I would have used one, it would have been uh, the power of a seed. But tonight I want to use as a subtopic, the seed will get you there. The seed will get you there. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And so <clears throat> let me just start off and, and, and just thank again uh, all of uh, everyone who helped to celebrate uh, 13 years of, of, of pastoral uh, service for me and my wife and all that are part of this congregation all your prayers, all your contributions, acts of kindness, your sentiments, your gifts. Uh, it has truly been a blessing and, and, and uh, a joy uh, to our souls. And I just want you to know that we appreciate you. And we thank you. Uh, we thank God for you. Amen. 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 Praise God. Uh, my wife and I were able to get away, have a little quick getaway uh, last weekend. And thank God uh, for the word that, that Elder Marco ministered. Amen. God, listen. A lot of times we get caught up into comparing ourselves with with somebody else and we kind of begin to emulate or, you know, try to imitate. Right. No, no. Listen, you're the nobody can beat you being you. If, if each of us purpose is to be the you God created us to be, then that's the best. That's the best we can be. That's the best we can offer God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So let's let's look quickly to Genesis one. Just a brief review as we move forward. Uh, again, we're talking about the law of seed time and harvest. And our subtopic is the seed will get you there. Amen. And I and I and I just want to encourage if you are, uh, if there are those that those of you joining us virtually, uh, you look, look, call somebody, encourage them to tune in to catch this. This is a word in season for our body. And I don't think it's just for our body, but I know that it is for our body. Amen. And so if you're a part of this, amen, uh, if God has planted you here, uh, this is pertinent for you in this hour. Amen. So and, and those of us who are present or whatever, just let's just let's get the word out. Let's share it. You know, I'm not all into that social media stuff. I don't know the ins and outs of it. But those of you who do utilize it. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So have you found Genesis one? All right. So <clears throat> listen. So so in verses twenty six through twenty eight. We see that God gave Adam a mandate and the mandate was to have dominion, to exercise dominion, to rule. Amen. To oversee. And in essence, he was to bring the entire earth into subjection to the government of God, the same government that heaven is under. Adam was to bring the earth into alignment and subjection to that same government system. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, he gave him a mandate to have dominion. But then we're going to see that he also gave him a revelation of the seed. And the seed is the means whereby Adam was to actually have dominion. It is impossible for us to exercise dominion apart from the revelation of the seed. Amen. So let's look at this uh, in verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. Right. Uh, we come on down to verse 27. So God created man in his own image 
in the image of God created him, male and female created he them. And so we understand that when he became, when he breathed the breath of life into to Adam, he became a living soul, a, a speaking spirit with creative power and ability just like God. Amen. Hallelujah. So he said that, uh, <clears throat> he said that uh, in verse, in verse uh, 20, 20, uh, Seven, uh, going to verse 28, excuse me, and God blessed them, God blessed them, and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Be fruitful and multiply, replenish. All, listen, just, just those three alone, you need a seed. You can't be fruitful, you can't multiply, you can't replenish without a seed, Amen. And so he, he goes on to say, subdue it, right? Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air and every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So, so he gave him requirements in verses 20, um, seven and 28. But now in verse 29, he, he introduces the law of the seed, the revelation of the seed. And the seed is the means whereby he was actually, uh, whereby he was, he was to actually have this dominion, right? And, and, and so we see from in verse 29, he says, I've given you every air bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree. So in the seed of every air bearing seed and every tree is the is in the fruit thereof is the tree itself. Are you understand what I'm saying? Praise God. Now, now, now think about that. Think about that. All right. So so you got an apple tree, right? So you, you have the fruit of the apple tree, which is the apple. But then, but then you have the tree itself contained within the apple in the form of the seed. Amen. And so if you understand the law of seed time and harvest with that revelation, you can then take that seed and perpetuate your own prosperity. You can perpetuate your desired harvest by knowing what to do with the seed you've been given. And not only can we do it, we are responsible to do it. That's why it was given to us. And, and we were made responsible to 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 utilize, to engage, to to put, to put into practice this law. Amen. Are y'all follow what I'm saying? Hallelujah. He says he says uh, he says in the which is a fruit of a tree yielding seed and to you it shall be for meat. It shall be for meat. So so we are to perpetuate our prosperity. Uh, through this law of seed time and harvest. And in the process of doing so, we're actually exercising dominion uh, over uh, this realm uh, that we've been made responsible for. Amen. We are altering and affecting um, uh, the conditions that exist here. Right. By sowing the seed we've been given to sow. With the seed we sow. Uh, we create a desired future, desired results and conditions. And whatever conditions that are, are existing presently uh, that are outside of the will of God for us, we dominate over them by sowing the seed that contains that which God does will for us. Are y'all follow what I'm saying? All right. All right. OK. So so having said that, let's let's quickly move on to uh, Psalm 25, Psalm 25. I mean, excuse me, Psalm 35. Psalm 35. And we're going to look at verse 27. Psalm 25. Excuse me, 35. Excuse me, Psalm 35. Look, it's, it was something good in Psalm 25. Look at that, too. But not right now. Uh, but Psalm 35, verse 27 and. You might want to find your place in Mark chapter 10 because uh, I think we'll just move over there uh, in conjunction uh, with this particular scripture. Amen. But well, we're going to start in Psalm 35 first. All right. Are you there? So so in Psalm 35, verse 27, it says, let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous call. So who is it that's supposed to shout for joy and be glad? Those who favor God's righteous cause, right? 
those who favor, those who prefer, those who put God's righteous cause, God's kingdom cause, God's will, God's agenda first, right? We are to shout for joy. We are to be glad. Amen. See, see, sometimes we, we, we're a little reluctant to do that because at, at, at the time we're just we're just so mindful of the circumstances and the conditions we're dealing with. And and, and we're saying, OK, well, if I give myself completely all the way over to God's cause and God's purpose for my life and give myself completely to serve in his interest. What about me? How are my needs going to get met? How am I going to make it? What about the things that I need? And so we, 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 only, we only really go so far in our service to the Lord uh, because we still carry the care of our own welfare and well-being. We see ourselves as being responsible for our own welfare and our own well-being. So we carry the weight of that. And under that weight, we, only, we, we, we will only go so far in the service we render to God. In other words, we're not going so far that we that we that we can't care for ourselves. And that's the problem. That's the problem. That's the problem. And so in in light of that, what are we doing? We're really favoring our own cause, our own agenda, our own welfare above God's. Amen. 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 So but but those who favor God's righteous cause, who seek first the kingdom. Right. We are to shout for joy and we are to be glad and we are to say continually, let them say continually, continually, let the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Amen. So we are to say continually, let the Lord be magnified who takes pleasure in our prosperity. Amen. We're sons of God. Even now, while yet living and walking around in the earth, we are sons of God. Such is the manner of the love that God has bestowed upon us, that he called us his sons. Yet we're sons who serve the father's interests, who put the father's agenda ahead of our own. Amen. In other words, there is no agenda that we adopt apart from the one God has for us. So in uh, so so we're actually in partnership with the father. His agenda becomes our agenda. And we no longer carry the weight and the care of our own uh, welfare, our own security, our own well-being. Right. Because because that is the father's responsibility. In other words, that. <clears throat> mm, <clears throat> when when we when we begin to understand our citizenship in God's kingdom. Right. When we begin to understand how the government. Of our country operates. And we conform and comply with it. Right. We understand that 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 the king, the king whose we are and who we serve. Has obligated himself to our own welfare and our own well-being. Amen. And so by giving us this law of seed time and harvest and the instructions and revelations that come with that. Right. He is providing for us. He is caring for us. Y'all follow what I'm saying? But the thing I want to emphasize is that God takes pleasure in your prosperity. He takes pleasure in your prosperity. This prosperity is not just money. Yes, it includes money, but it's not limited to money. We, we discussed last Wednesday. This translates from the root word shalom. In most cases, it translates peace. But in this case, in another case, it translated prosperity. And, and so it, it includes peace, but, 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 but it's not just peace. It means to have favor. It means to have great wealth. It means that all be right, that all be well. It has to do with protection and security. Yes, it means peace, a wholeness, the, the state of being wherein nothing is missing and nothing is broken in your life. That your life is, is everything God originally intended and designed it to be. That's prosperity. And God takes pleasure in your life being everything he intended. He gets no joy or pleasure when there's any aspect of our lives 
uh, that are out of sync with him. That's, that's not as he intended it to be. He takes pleasure in our lives being well and everything being right like it ought to be. Are y'all following what I'm saying? Hallelujah. All right, all right. So <clears throat> now, having said that, let's, let's, let's go over to Mark <clears throat> chapter 10. Now, God takes great pleasure in your what? In your prosperity, right? He takes great pleasure in everything about your life being what it ought to be, right? Right? Now, <clears throat> we can say it this way. He takes great pleasure in increasing you. Not only in your life being everything it ought to be, but your life continually becoming better and better. He takes pleasure in increasing you, right? Are you understand what I'm saying? Now, I want to look <clears throat> now. Now, Bishop Downing ministered something that we were we've been chosen. We have been chosen. And, and, and he talked a little further. I had an opportunity to talk to him a little further a couple of days after the service about some of the things the Lord has stirred on his heart about us as a as a congregation, as a people, as a branch of Zion, that we've been chosen. And so a lot of things, you know, some th some things were, were, you know, confirmed or what have you. But we've got to understand as a as a local assembly of believers that we have been chosen by God for kingdom purposes. That we have a kingdom responsibility and assignment to cause the reality of God's governing authority and rule to become tangible and real in the earth. And throughout the earth. Are you understand what I'm saying? So we've been chosen, which makes us responsible. Amen. And, and, and we also learn that God is expecting more from us. He's requiring more from us. Amen. I mean, though, there's, there's a scripture in Luke 12, 48 says to whom much is given. Much is required. And, and all glory be to God. He has given us. Uh, some, 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 some revelation of substance in this house, particularly in the area of, of the kingdom and what it is and how to operate in it. Amen. And so, so the revelation that has been given to us, entrusted to us, uh, it, 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 God requires us to walk in it. Are you understand what I'm saying? That, that it's, it's just like when you were growing up with your with your brothers and sisters, depending on where you were in the in the in the lineup, you know, with your siblings, oldest, youngest, whatever. Uh, you saw varying degrees of expectations that your parents had with the children. Those that were older, those that were more mature. Right. They they were in a position to handle more freedom but they were also in a position to handle more responsibilities and more was required of them, was it not? And as you continue to mature and grow up, the same became true with you. And so it is with us in the body of Christ. With this ministry, with this assembly of believers, much has been uh, entrusted to us, given to us, revealed to us. And God is requiring us to walk in it. Amen? So he is requiring us to come up in terms of the level on which we're walking and the level on which we're serving. He's requiring us to come up. Amen. Say this. Say we've been chosen. And God is requiring more of me. He is requiring me to come up. And we learned in the evening service that the law of seed, time, and harvest will get us there. Have you found Mark 10? All right. Look at verse 17. Just just kind of look at look at a little bit of this passage here. Uh, verse 17. When he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And I want to I don't want to spend a lot of time into going into this. I just want to deal with eternal life from the standpoint of the quality of life available to us in the kingdom of God while we're still living in the earth. Amen. That is an aspect of eternal life. God desire. See, if we if you have received Jesus Christ, you believed on him, you already have eternal life. So it's not something that's going to begin after you get to heaven. It, it, it's already begun for you the moment you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You have eternal life right now. 
Are you understand what I'm saying? There is a rich, fulfilling quality of life that is afforded us in the kingdom per our citizenship. Amen. And so, 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 so that being said, let's just go on a little further. Jesus says, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is God. Now listen to verse 19. He says, thou knowest the, command, the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy father and mother. Right? The, the young ruler responds. and He answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Right? Now in this next verse. Jesus beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, one thing thou lack. So in other words, he's pointing out, yeah, you've done all that since your youth. But I'm requiring more. I'm requiring more. We've been faithful with, with, with you know, to some degree and to some measure with what we've been entrusted with. You know, but God is requiring more. Understand what I'm saying? He he's requiring more. But listen, he also has more for each of you. He has more for us. Are you understand what I'm saying? <clears throat> so there, there is a greater measure, a greater dimension to be enjoyed and experienced while yet in the earth, in the kingdom of God, a greater measure and dimension of eternal life, of life in that more abundantly. There's a greater measure and dimension of it that God has for us. Amen. And there is more from us that he is requiring. Are y'all follow what I'm saying? <clears throat> he says, he says, one thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast and give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come take up the cross and follow me. Now, he didn't say you had to wait till you get to heaven to get the treasure. But again, I don't want to go too deep into that. But let's just let's let's look at this. He said there's one thing you lack, right? Let's look at this. He says. Go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast. And give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And then he tells him to come take up your cross and follow me, right? So he obviously he's letting him know he's been chosen. To follow him, to serve him. This is this is no different than anything that Je anything Jesus said to the to the other uh, disciples. He's been chosen. And, and 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 he's been he's being shown that more is required of him. Are you seeing that? But now here's what I want to point out to you. One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give, and thou shalt have. See, I'm just, I'm just pulling up those, those few words. Give, and thou shalt have. In other words, you can't have more of what God intends standing pat. To have more of what God ha has intended for you to enjoy, the method of the means is to give. Give and you shall have. So in other words, the place that God is, 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 is calling us to, the place or the level that he's requiring us to come up to, it's the seed that's going to get you there. That which he has for you, the, 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 the greater measure of goodness that he has for you, right? It's, it's by the seed that we appropriate. Give that you might have. How do you have? By giving. How do you increase? By giving, by sowing. How do you reap? By sowing. Are you understand what I'm saying? All right, let, let's, 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 let's go on a little further. All right. Now, <clears throat> notice he was sad at that saying and went about, went away greed for he had great possessions because see, he, he, he looked at giving as loss. 
And that's the problem that so many of us in the body of Christ have. We look at giving as loss as opposed to seeing giving as gain. There is no loss in giving. None whatsoever. You gain by giving. Hallelujah. See, when, when, when you are holding so tightly to what's in your hand out of fear that that's all you ever going to have. And if you let it go, you're going to be short. You will never give. Even though what you got in your hand is still not enough. I mean, think about it. With all the needs that we have, with all the desires that we have, with all that we that we believe that God has put in our heart to do. Do we currently have in our possession enough to do? it? No. Now, if you do. You ain't thinking big enough. I mean, that's just the honest truth of it. You, you look in scripture and there's, you will find no place in scripture how God dealt with man to do something concerning his calling where, 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 where he could do it without depending on God as his source. Mm -mm. If you can do it, if you got enough to do it, it ain't God. It might be God on a certain level and a measure, but he ain't through. If you keep walking with him a little long, he's going to jack that bad boy up. He's going to take you higher. And so the way there is the seed. It's the seed that's going to get you there. Now, look, look, look where Jesus was trying to take this guy. Look what look he was chosen, but he required more of him, but he also had more for him. So now look, Jesus looked about. He said, how heartless shall they that have riches enter the kingdom of God? It's not the having the riches. It's about trusting in the riches, right? And if you keep reading, you, you, you see that, right? The, the next verse says, how hard it is for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God. And that's not, that's not talking about heaven, right? It, it's, it's talking about God's way of doing things. It's talking about God's system of government. The God's system of ruling, God's system of, of, of um, that he's prescribed for us to live. You can't live God's way if you're trusting in anything other than God. So those that have a lot oftentimes tend to trust in what they have and the trust they have, in, the trust they place in what they have prevents them from fully entering in and being fully compliant with God's way, with God's system. Are you understand what I'm saying? So, so now come on down. If you look at verse 27, um, well, look at verse 26. And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, who then can be saved? Who then can be saved? Who then can be saved? Who then can be rescued? Right? Again, we're not talking about literally going to heaven here. Part of the word soteria means to be rescued. It means to be safe from the present evil conditions and circumstances. Yes, it would include where we spend eternity, right? But we're emphasizing the, the earthly aspects of eternal life that we are, that God intends for us to enjoy, right? So, so, so now look, Jesus is saying in verse 27, with men, it is impossible. There are some things with men that they're just going to be flat out impossible. That's what he's saying, right? There are some limitations. There are some constraints and restrictions, right, that man has that he cannot uh, go beyond. So with men, yeah, there are some things that are impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible, right? You, it, it may, it, you, you, we may look at our financial situation right now, we may look at what it is we owe. We may look at what it is we currently have. And the gap is too great for us to see any way where we can ever measure up, catch up, or let alone get ahead. And, but, but, but with what we currently have, with our own resources and our own wisdom and ability, yeah, it, 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 can, it will be impossible. But when, God, but when we factor God into the equation, that throws impossibilities out the window. Right. All things are possible with God and with them that believe. Right. 
All right. So now look, look, look where he was trying to take him. Right. The, p- ver- verse uh, verse 28. Peter began to say to him, lo, we have left all. And we have followed thee. And Jesus answered and said, verily, I say unto you, there is no man that have left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels. But he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time. Hallelujah. So when Jesus was requiring this young ruler to liquidate his assets and to give, he was requiring him to take a step that would allow him to manifest himself for him that would allow him to, to increase him a hundredfold. He had a hundredfold increase on his mind, on his heart for this man. There is no such thing as any service we render to God, any action we take, any any action or expression of love and service or worship to God. There's nothing we do for his sake in the gospel that you don't have a hundredfold return on in this time. In this time. Well, somebody said, well, where, where is it? We, we got to make a demand on it. Got to make a demand on it. We got, we have to, we have to, we have to sow the seed of obedience and service. Right? That generates that harvest. We have to appropriate it with our faith. We have to place a demand on it by believing what he said and having a corresponding action to it. We have to we have to renew our minds until we're living with an awareness and consciousness with an expectation. Of a hundredfold of the maximum yield of better. We, we, we ought not dread tomorrow because of for any reason, but especially because of anything we went through today or yesterday, because we ought to be expecting better. We don't have to put better off to the future to three years down the road. We don't even have to put better off to the morning. Listen, from the time you are awake in the morning, your day should be getting better progressively. Glory to God. And again, the acts of obedience and service we render to God, the seeds we sow, the obedience, uh, our obedience today, right? It's not laws. When it leaves your hand, it doesn't leave your life. It goes into your, your future and pre- it makes preparation for your arrival. Are you understand what I'm saying? But what we, with, what, we, what we retain in the hand, what we refuse to let go of, what we refuse to give to sow, right? But we want to keep and place our trust and confidence in it, right? Well, that's as big as it's ever going to be. That's as big as it's ever going to be. And, 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 and so we can only have what that can produce. Because, because God is not factored in it now because we rejected what he was telling us to do. Are y'all following what I'm saying? The way to the hundredfold, to the way to the maximum yield, the way to the better that God has for you. Is by way of sowing and reaping. It's through the seed. It's through the law of seed, time, and harvest. Right? Wherever you are in your walk with God, whatever you are on whatever level you're serving God, whatever level you're receiving, experiencing from God, listen, the way up, the way from where you are to where God wants you to be, the way there is the seed. The seed will get you there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The seed God commands you to sow will produce the harvest that God desires for you and you desire yourself. You know what we do a lot too often? You know what we do? We sow, we give, but we do it as we think we can afford to be without it. So in essence, we end up sowing sparingly. Therefore, we reap sparingly. In other words, sowing it doesn't really, we we don't sow so much. 
We only, we, the, the, we, the amount we sow really doesn't move our faith. So the return on it ain't no big deal either. If what we're giving to God doesn't move, doesn't matter, it doesn't mean anything to us, there's no honor in it. If there's no honor in it, God doesn't receive it. I understand what I'm saying. See, the problem of Malachi when he's talking about why you, you've robbed me, it wasn't that they wasn't bringing what they called a tithe, but they, but they had, they, they were bringing one-eyed chickens and lame uh, animals and shit. There was no honor towards God. They were going through the motions, but there was no honor. There was no reverence. It wasn't worship. And a lot of us in the body of Christ, we have, we have relegated worshiping God in tithes and offerings just to a religious practice. Doesn't move us to do, to give it. It doesn't produce anything and what it produces won't move us either. Are you understand? So it's important to sow the seed God tells you to sow with the right heart and the right attitude. And it's not going to always look like you ought to do it. It's not going to be convenient. But listen, the Bible tells, oh, I think it's in Ecclesiastes, that he that observes the wind and the clouds, he will not sow. If you're waiting for an opportune time to sow, you're never going to sow because Satan will see to it that it's never an opportune time. And since when does our obedience to God come down to what's convenient? Anybody walking with God, any of you walking with God, tell me a time where God checked with you about your convenience concerning his instructions and his commandments, what he's telling you to do, how he's telling you to conduct yourself. No. Because, see, he doesn't, he doesn't deal with us according to our present conditions and circumstances in the way that we um, navigate life in light of those present conditions and circumstances. No, he deals with us in light of the shed blood of Jesus and, 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 and us being risen together with Jesus and what that entails us. He's dealing with us like we have a, that we, that we're living by heaven supply, not earth's. Are y'all see what I'm saying? My God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He'll meet your needs according to heaven's supply. And why? Because as a citizen of heaven, you have a right to heaven's supply. Your citizenship gives you a right to heaven's supply. It allows you to make demand on heaven's supply. Right? But it also makes us responsible to follow and heed God's instructions in the earth. Our citizenship gives us rights and privileges with God to live from heaven's supply, but it also gives us responsibilities to God to rule in the earth, to obey what he's saying to us and heed the instructions he's given to us in the earth. That's how, that's how we access heaven's supply. Are y'all following what I'm saying? Everybody good? Praise God. Okay, so, 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 <clears throat> go with me to Philippians 4. Philippians 4. And we're going to, you, you might want to find uh, chapter 1 also, but we're going to start in Philippians 4. Start in Philippians 4. <clears throat> and, and if you're taking notes, write this down. Your seed connects you to the anointing. Your seed connects you to the anointing, or you can say it connects you to the blessing. Right? It, <clears throat> it, it, it creates a partnership. Your seed, your sowing, creates a partnership uh, with 
whoever you're sowing into or whatever ministry you're sowing into, your seed creates a partnership from which you're able to partake of the anointing and grace on the life of the one you're sowing into or that's resident in that ministry that you're sowing into. That your seed connects you to the anointing. It creates a partnership from which you're able to partake of additional anointings other than what's resident inside of you the most. Are oh, y'all understand what I'm saying? It allows you to partake of the anointing and the grace, the abilities of God that, that are strong in another individual or ministry that may not be so, so much strong, so strong in your own life, right? It enables you to have the fruit that, that, that another's anointing is producing, even though that anointing may not be present in your life. Your seed connects you to them. It creates a partnership where from, from which you're able to partake of that anointing and have the benefit of that anointing producing for you in your life. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Genesis, what is it? Genesis 26. God told, uh, uh, told him, I, I stay in that land. He said, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to bless you. Right. He sowed during a time of famine. Right. The Bible says he reaped a hundredfold in the same year. During a famine, during conditions whereby, naturally speaking, it was impossible to get any type of increase, any type of yield, yet he got the maximum yield. Why? Because God was with him. There was an anointing on him. There was a grace on him. The blessing was on him. And the blessing, one of the meanings of the blessing, it's an endowment. It's, 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 it's an endowment of power. Uh, it's an endowment of God's power on your life that overrides the curse. Makes it null and void in your life overrides manifestations of the curse in the earth, the conditions that it creates, making it null and void in your life. Why? So that you can continue to prosper and fare well in spite of. Isaac had that blessing on him. And he, and he, and he, he, he reaped a hundredfold, the maximum yield, doing conditions that were not conducive for any type of harvest. Right? So what happens? The Bible says he became very great. He became so great. That, that the mayor and all them folk there, they got envious of him. They got jealous and they began to drive him out, drive him out, drive him out. Right. Bible says he continued to redig the wells of his father, Abraham. And, and, and even during a famine, he's he's finding water. And every time he would find water, here they would come to drive him out and push him out and take that for themselves. Right. Until finally he was completely driven out the, out the land. Now he's minding his own business. Next thing you know, here they come tracking him down, talking about we want to enter into covenant with you. Why? Why did they want to enter into the covenant with a man that they had driven out of their land? They saw what the blessing, they saw that the Lord was with them. They saw the good that, that the Lord being with him, the effects of it, the, the, the produce of it, right? The results of it, right? Now I'm told that the Jewish Hamas, it's recorded in the Jewish Hamas that one of the reasons they drove him from the land, they thought that the drought, the famine was over because he kept finding water. But once he left the land, the blessing that was having an effect on the land left with him. So the famine wasn't over. It was just displaced because the blessing was overriding it. Now that he left, the Jewish Hamas records that all of those wells that he found water dried up. And they knew, oh, the Lord is with him. We need to enter into covenant, or we can say it this way. We need to enter into partnership with him. Why? So that we can partake of the anointing on this life, the blessing on this life, the power of God on this life, so that we can have the benefit of that in our life. Are y'all seeing what I'm saying? Hallelujah. And God has ordained and established divine relationships and covenant relationships for us for that very reason. So that we can give of our support to, to, a, to an additional cause and agenda of God and yet partake of the anointing and grace 
on that ministry that he's called us to support and partner with, that we can have the benefit of that fruit in our lives, in our ministry. Are y'all understand what I'm saying? Philippians 4, are you there? So I, I, I started saying that your seed connects you to the anointing or to the blessing, right? And, and I'm, I may come back to that in a minute. <clears throat> uh, look, at, look at verse 1. Uh, well, no, let's drop on down to verse, uh, yeah, look at verse, no, look at verse 15. Look at verse 15, Philippians 4, 15. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, talking about his ministry of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me. The Amplified says entered into partnership with me, right? No other church entered into partnership with me concerning giving and receiving, giving and receiving, sowing and reaping, but you, you're the only one, you're the only church that it entered into, that communicated with me, that entered into partnership with me concerning giving and receiving. You're the only one. You see that? For even in Thessalonica, you sent once and again unto my necessity. You sent, you sent money, you sent goods, you prayed for me, right? For my necessity. Now look at verse 17. He says, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Amplified verse 17 says, not that I seek or I'm eager for your gift, but I do seek and I'm eager for the fruit which increases to your credit the harvest of blessing that is accumulating to your account. So he's acknowledging that you're the only church that entered into partnership with me in my, in my ministry, in my, in my assignment. You communicated, you partnered with me through giving and receiving. You sent more than once. You sent over and over again to my needs, to my necessities, right? Now, he's received all that has been sent, all is well, right? And so he's, he's talking to them about giving, not because he needs the gift, but he recognized what the giving, what their giving does for them. He's saying, I'm not seeking after a gift, but what I'm after is the fruit that will abound to your account. The, again, the Amplified says that the fruit which increases to your credit, the harvest of blessing that's accumulating to your account. What's the, what, why, why is that so important? Why? So you can make withdrawals from that account. In other words, when you obey God, in, 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 who, in, in, this, in, in that which you possess, in your substance, in your worship, in your giving, in your sowing of your seeds, right? God is, is noting. He's taking notes. He's keeping records and he's crediting your account. Every time you obey God in your giving, he's, he's crediting your account. Okay, there's a harvest of blessings accumulating in your account. Amen. Oh, God, God, take God, God watches. He sees it all. He keeps record. Look, what about, what, what about the brother, the, what, what's the dude, uh, the Italian dude? He sent arms and fasted and prayed, and it came up before God as a memorial. Right? And what God do? Through a vision. Talk to Peter, go down there and get in and preach the gospel to that man so he and his household can be saved. Oh, your giving touches God. It reaches God. It moves God. Why? Because there's honor. It's when it's done with right motive. See, there's honor. There's worship. It's an expression of love and faith is released. I y'all understand what I'm saying? He goes on to say, verse 18, he says, I have all and I abound. I'm full, having received of Apro Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you. It's an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable and well-pleasing to God. But my God, he didn't say our God. It is our God, but he's saying my God 
shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Do you think Paul has a revelation that God will supply his own needs? His God will supply his need. His God, whose he is, who he serves, who he's in covenant with, serving, right? He knows God will supply his needs, right? He's trusting God. He's walking out the plan of God, trusting God to meet his needs, right? Okay, so he's saying to this church at, at, at Macedonia, this, this Philippian church, because you have partnered with me in what God called me to do. He's, he, what he's saying, what he's really saying is, my God is going to supply your needs right along with mine. Why? Because you, just, listen, in other words, when God is supplying my needs, he's not going to just stop with me. But he is seeing your needs as one and the same as mine because you've entered into partnership with me through your giving and your receiving. And with the same measure he meets mine, he's meeting yours. That Philippian church was able to partake of and benefit from and enjoy fruit, goodness in their life. That was a result of the anointing and grace on Paul's life because they partnered with him. Oh, Jesus. It was the same way with Jesus. Mark chapter 6. Because you have allowed your familiarity with me to get in the way of you honoring me for who I am, instead of honoring me, you become offended at me. My anointing can't flow to you. I can't do the miracles here that, that the Father would have me to do. Because you're offended at me. The Bible says he couldn't do any mighty works. He just laid his hands on a few sick folk. Why? Because they were offended. They didn't honor. They didn't reverence. They were offended. Sometimes God connects us with individuals and ministries with an anointing Maybe it's a different anointing than, than, the, than the one that, oper that we're operating in the, the strongest. Maybe it's a greater anointing. Maybe we operate in a similar anointing, but it's working at a greater measure, right? But he'll connect us with people uh, to partner with and to, to support them in their kingdom agenda to serve and assist. But at the same time, we get the benefit of their anointing and grace producing for us in the same way it produces for them. I give, I give you, I give you a good example with my own life, right? So, so when that dude, when that, when my family was abducted, <clears throat> so you know, later that afternoon, when, 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 when you know, when I, I told Pastor Diggs what had happened, right? He immediately began to pray and decree things that it never occurred to me to pray and decree. Because I was just so grateful that my family was safe, well, alive and well, right? He began to decree. It never dawned on me. I, I mean, I was just as content. Oh, my baby's good. But he began to declare and decree that the, that the guy would be caught and brought to justice that night, that everything he stole would be returned that night, that there would be no trauma in, in, in terms of the minds and no negative effects whatsoever, that there would be the peace of God. And every bit of it came to pass. I partook of the anointing and the grace on him through the seed I sowed. And I was able to reap a bit. I was able to reap and enjoy the fruit of his anointing and his grace. Are oh, you understand what I'm saying? 
So often people will, will text me or call me and ask me to pray about this or pray about that, right? Maybe it, it particularly in the area of a healing or something, right? And, 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 and they have a working knowledge and understanding to some degree of faith and healing and stuff like that. But I notice when there's honor involved, I can sense a release of anointing when I, when I pray. And at the same time, when there is very little or no honor at all, it, it, it's like it's blocked. That's just the reality of it. He says, my God shall supply all of your needs the same way he does mine, according to his riches in glory by Christ. Go to verse one, chapter one, excuse me, Philippians chapter one. And, and, and this just supports everything I just said. Basically, look at verse three, chapter one, verse three. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you are all making requests with joy for you are. Excuse me, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. We, we just got, we got through reading about that fellowship, that partnership in chapter four, right? Fellowship means partnership, right? Are you hear what I'm saying? All right, so, so look, let's look, look what he says. Uh, for your fellowship, for your partnership, in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, I'm confident of this, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, in as much as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you all are partakers of my grace. Hallelujah. You see that? Through the partnership, through sowing seed and supporting what this, what this man was called to do, they entered into partnership and they were able to partake of his grace. To have the benefit of the grace and anointing that was on his life producing, have that same anointing and grace in their lives producing as well. I tell you, we cannot ignore divine covenant relationships and connections. Right. Another example of that. Uh, I would go to Second Corinthians chapter uh, eight. Another ex another scriptural example of that partnership. I'll just tell you about it while you're turning to Second Corinthians chapter eight. But in Luke chapter five. In Luke chapter five, we see that that Jesus. asked Peter for the use of his boat. So he could do what? So he could preach the gospel, right? So, so we know what happened that Peter and he had partners in the other boat. There were, there were two, there were fishermen. They were cleaning out the nets. They had been fishing all night. They were ready to go home. But Peter allowed Jesus the use of his boat. So what happened? Peter's letting, Peter letting Jesus use his boat served to assist Jesus in his kingdom agenda, in preaching the gospel, in teaching. He contributed to the will of God being done through the preaching and the teaching of the gospel by allowing Jesus to use his boat. What happened? So we can say it this way. He partnered with the Jesus Christ Evangelistic Association. And as a result, he partook of the anointing and the grace that was on Jesus. That anointing of grace was now prevalent in his life for his welfare and his well-being where previously the night before, through toil and sorrow, he came up short. But now during a time of the day where people don't fish because fish swim away from the net, the anointing and grace he's partaking of overrode it, causing all the fish to swim up in that net. I personally believe, even I, 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 I believe that anointing caused fish to be produced in that lake. Now, here's the point I'm going to make. The same way that Peter partnered with Jesus and, that, and he partook of that anointing and grace, get, 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 look what happened. Boat began to sink. What did he do? Called for his partners in the other boat. And they, too, loaded their boat. Wait a minute. Jesus did. They didn't let Jesus use their boat. 
But yet they got a boat sinking low too. But they were partners with Peter. Because Peter did, they got the benefit like they did too through partnership. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Listen, we all as a part of this ministry and congregation have a part to play in the will of God being done in the kingdom of God being manifest in and throughout our domain, right? We all have a part as a local assembly of belief. My part is to feed you, among other things, to feed you and tend to you, right? To make to 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 to, to, to go before God and get understanding and truth and revelation to feed you with. Right? Your part is to receive, your part is to take it and apply it in your everyday life and your everyday affairs, right? You understand what I'm saying? Now Everybody that God plants here, he plants them here for his pleasure. And I truly believe it's so that they can benefit from the anointing and revelation here is here, but so that they can also part contribute, do their part to the kingdom agenda here. And guess what? I benefit from your part. You benefit from my part. I don't, I may not have the same exact specific part as you or nor you me, but each of us doing our part, we benefit from each other. It's a partnership. So if, if God is increasing me in an area or in a way, and you're a part of this ministry, listen, the, the intent and the design of God is to, is to increase you in the same way. But but and, and I understand we're we're walking it we're, we're all growing at different levels we're at different places and I understand I get all that that's cool not a problem so there may be some things I share with you I may say decisions that are made of what have you you know direction from the Lord what you may not agree with it that's cool you know, it, 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 listen God talked to me about stuff I don't agree with but I don't have the privilege to you know I, I don't have the right if you will as one being in His service. To say, no, I ain't gonna do it. So I, I what what I try to do is spend enough time with him. You know, I'm willing to be willing, and I go to him for help to understand it. And then as he gives me understanding on what to do and how to proceed, I, I act on that, right? Are you following what I'm saying? But here's here's if so if 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 there's some instructions or directions that's coming for you don't understand. And, and because if you don't understand it, maybe you're not in agreement. Cool. Got it. No problem. But here's what you don't want to do. Don't put your mouth on it. Don't talk against it. Don't make light of it. Don't spread dissension about it. Because now you coming against God's agenda. And nobody fares well when they do that. You don't, you just, that you're just not going to win that one. So many people, we don't even understand it. We invoke the curse upon our lives by putting our mouth on folk, by rebelling and coming against stuff. And we don't even understand it. So, it so, so if you don't understand, be open and receptive to understand and, and walk in what you got and trust God to help you. But don't talk against it. Amen. Don't, don't, don't talk against it. Okay, so, 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 uh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Okay, let, let, let me, let me, get, just give me a couple of minutes to just unload this. Look at, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 8, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Now, let me submit to you. You can sow your way out of financial trouble. You want out of debt, you want a, a, a greater measure, dimension of God's goodness, of the life he intended, the seed will get you there. You can sow your way out of trouble. How do I know that? Because you sowed your way into trouble. I, I, I asked the Lord about that. I said, Lord, so we, so Lord, you're saying we, I can really sow my way out of that. He said, yeah, you sowed your way into it. Galatians 6, 7 and 8. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. So whatsoever man soweth, that shall he reap. If you sow to the flesh, what you reap? Corruption. But if you sow to the spirit, what do you reap? Life everlasting, right? So that so the consequence, whatever our present state, there are the consequences of decisions and choices. 
Every choice is a seed. Every consequence is a harvest. So whatever state we're in, it, it's a result of a seed we sow. Want to get out of it? Sow a different seed. Sow the seed God gives you to sow. You can sow your way out. You can sow your way into what God has for you. So for the sake of time, let me just hit just hit a couple of things here. Verse chapter eight, verse one. Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. Now, the churches of Macedonia, he's referring to this Philippian church that I just we just read about in the book of Philippians. Right. He's in and and, and 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 also you could include Thessalonica and then maybe. Um, um, but 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 I want to mainly emphasize this Philippian church. Right. This is he's referencing this. He says how that in a great trial of affliction. The abundance of their joy, a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto riches, abounded unto the riches of their liberality. Now, let me just unravel some of that. And let me read this from this, the, the contemporary English version. I'm probably just going to read verses one uh, through five uh, for the contemporary English version. It says, my friends, we want you to know that the churches in Macedonia have shown others God's gift of undeserved grace. Now, listen to this. Listen to verse two. Although they were going through hard times and were very poor, they were glad to give generously. Although they were going through hard times and were very poor, they were glad. To give generously. They gave as much as they could afford and even more simply because they wanted to. They even asked and begged us to let them have the joy of giving their money for God's people. And they did more than we had hoped. They gave themselves first to the Lord and then to us just as God wanted them to. That sounds like to me that they favored God's righteous cause. They put God's cause, God's agenda above their own necessity, above their own well-being, even beyond what they could afford mathematically. They chose to give, to sow, to be a blessing. Right? They sold their way out of their, their, their affliction, out of their trouble, out of their debt. Are you understand what I'm saying? All right. Go tr drop on down to 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 notice, 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 notice. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? OK, the, the, the King James says the abundance of their joy, right? The abundance of their joy. The CEV said the, the CEV said. Uh, they were very glad, right? So flip over to chapter nine, right? Verse seven, every man according as he has purposes in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. So listen, giving or sowing uh, out of compulsion, grudgingly, necessity, fear, worry, to be seen, to be talked favorable. That, no, all that's the wrong motive. No, 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 no. That listen, that 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 ain't gonna really produce nothing. But 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 to give joyfully, willingly, cheerfully, as you have purpose and obedience to God, obedience to the leading of the Spirit, obedience to the flow of His love, not grudging the necessity. Why? God loveth the cheerful giver. He manifests himself to those whose giving is cheerfully joyous and prompt to do it. Those whose heart is in their giving. And another reason we can be cheerful about it is because he's able to make up the difference. He is able, he is faithful to cause every favor and earthly blessing to come to you in abundance. In other words, that is going to be far, far, far more and above than what we could attain to in ourselves in carrying the weight of it ourselves. Sound like, sound like to me, back to what Jesus was saying, hundredfold return. Sound like to me that God's taking pleasure in the prosperity of those who favor his righteous cause. Are you seeing what I'm saying? 
Glory to God. Not only, not only, listen, well, uh, uh, I, listen, God is not only, you know, uh, bringing this, this goodness, this abundance into your life for your own welfare, and your own well-being, but, but, but for you to, to live and have your desire satisfied, but be in a position to abound to every good work and every charitable donation. Let me just share something I believe the Lord was stirring in my spirit a little while ago before the service. What is, what's going on in this ministry, what's going on in our lives individually for those who would give heed for those who would trust and take this word to heart, that we're going to see progress. We're going to we're going to make progress. We're going to see increase. And he said it this way. It's going to happen in leaps and bounds, leaps and bounds. In other words, it's not going to be the normal, natural progression of step by step, but it's going to happen in leaps and bounds. It's going to it's going to be beyond normal. It's going to be exponential. It's going to happen exponentially. And I, you know, I always like to, okay, Lord, give me, give me, give me something from your scripture that, 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 that supports that. All right. Look, look at verse 10. Now he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and what? Multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your right. In other words, what comes back to you is going to be exponentially more than what the seed you sow can produce on its own. He's going to take the seed you sow, your acts of love and expressions of love and obedience and service, and he's going to multiply that so that it actually produces a greater return than it can do naturally. It's going to be exponential. Just purpose in your heart. You're going to trust God. You're not going to lean to your own understanding. And you're going to be quick to obey. Ask him to help you. If you're open and you're receptive, you're, you're willing, you're going to notice it. You're going to discern it. You're going to know it. And you're going to have to make a decision. Okay, Lord, am I going to trust you or not? Don't play that game. Well, if it's God, if that's the, no, no, no. The devil ain't going to ask you to sow. Mm -mm. Trust God to help you to discern his voice from that which is not. Trust him. Act on it. He's not going to take you out there. He's he, he, he not going to. Listen, God knows you better than you know you. And he, and, and he deals with each of us accordingly. But whatever instructions he gives us, we will be able to follow. He will not instruct us beyond our ability to follow. He will not instruct us beyond our faith. Now, he may provide some instructions that, that, that cause us to stretch our faith. But he'll, he'll lead us and develop us. And as we grow and develop in faith, then those instructions will reflect that growth. So his desire, his intention is that we come up in the, in the measure in which we're serving, but we come up on the measure in which we're receiving, in which we're receiving. And I'm not going to turn that for a sake of time, but Isaiah 119, if you be willing and obedient. You shall eat the good of the land as opposed to the bad. You won't eat the good. God's highest and God's best through your willingness, obedience, through the seed you sow. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for the unfolding of your word tonight. We thank you for bearing us witness by your spirit that this is coming from you and not a man. And that it worketh, that your word is working effectually in our lives and on our behalf. We thank you, Lord, for for, for as we're making adjustments in our attitude and in our heart, as we hear and receive insight and understanding, as we're getting on board with you, Lord, as we're forsaking that which is not of you and embracing that which is of you, we're leaving from where we were and we're moving forward to where you purpose us to be. We're coming up, Father, with the seed we're sowing, primarily the, the, un, the, the incorruptible word of God is the seed we're sowing in our hearts, Lord. And whatever instructions that 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 flows out of that, Lord, we will obey and thereby sow that seed as well. We thank you, Father, for increase. We thank you for prominence, promotion, 
recognition and reward, Lord. We thank you for favor, God. We thank you for life in that more abundantly. We bless your name. And we take this opportunity to worship in our giving and our tithes and our offerings with great joy, with great delight. We bring our gift before you, Lord. We pray, Lord, according to your word. We're asking you, as, as you said to in your word, prove your faithfulness to us even now, Lord. We believe even now you're opening the windows of heaven and pouring us out of blessing that we don't have room enough to receive. But we take it by faith, Father. We take hold of that open windows of heaven blessing as our own. We thank you that you're literally stopping the devil in his tracks. You're rebuking him for our sake. He will not destroy the fruit of our ground, Lord. He will not bring about any diminish, any diminishing of our lives whatsoever. And Lord, I thank you that our vines will not cast forth their fruit before their time in the field, but we receive the maximum yield, the maximum harvest on all of our seeds that pertain to life and godliness. And we believe we've received this now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, 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 amen.